Somewhere in my psyche, I'm still a van bum. Somewhere in my psyche, somebody's gonna be buying a van that they're the fourth generation. My name is Matt Brailsford, and uh, in Beartooth Van Works as we speak, yeah. which is a uh, a child of our business partner Jake and myself. Cool. So Jake, Jake Toko, and I have been working together for more than ten years, and we've been working together professionally on lots of different construction projects, lots of different renovations. I've always been um, more the financial side of things, more the ideas side of things. Jake is a master craftsman. So the partnership was already formed, we just hadn't been doing vans. So it was easy for us to sit down over a glass of uh, cider and discuss an, a new future for us. And Jake and I were discussing how we could do that and what came up was van conversions. You, you have a very fixed amount of space yeah. and then you manifest something in that space uh, that maximizes the space and maximizes our skills. And it was pretty easy for myself to get into it because I pretty much, my entire youth was either living in or traveling in RVs or conversions yeah, yeah. or something like that. So when I was a month old, we moved on to a, a school bus that my dad converted. And so while my mother was pregnant, uh, they, my dad fitted out the school bus. And they waited until I was born, waited for a month to make sure that there weren't any complications and then loaded us up, sold the house and took off wow. for the next couple of years. So I learned how to walk on the school bus, learned how to talk on the school bus, yeah. and I spent more or less the rest of my life on the road of some sort or another. Yeah. Uh, lived overseas for abroad, right? yeah. Yeah, okay. 15 years in, in China and came back to Montana where I'd grown up. I've traveled to the United States on three different occasions and three different bands. Yeah. So it was quite close to my heart and something that I knew that I could improve on from just having used them so often. Yep. We all to do something different in that we're not, with the van conversion trend that's going on, so many of the bigger companies seem to think that what you need to do is you need to take an A class and you need to take all the stuff that's in an A class and put it into a B class. Mm -hmm. And so when you get into one of these uh, van conversions done by one of the more established uh, companies, you're in a cave. There's no space to move around. Nobody can walk by each other. You, there's barely any windows, you have huge floor to ceiling cabinets that break up the van and make it into just a very uninviting space. So all of our space considerations that we go for are lots of room, lots of airiness, lots of windows, lots of light, nothing like a cave. Yeah. So, and making it really durable for Montana playgrounds. The rugged part is, is pretty obvious. Yeah. You know, rugged is where the fun is. It doesn't matter if you're in Montana or Joshua Tree, and you want something that can be bashed around. They want something that you don't want to be scared of taking it over some, some rough rocks. And you know, part of the ruggedness is not having a whole bunch of extraneous systems. You know, you don't need an espresso coffee maker to make good coffee in the morning. Uh, an espresso coffee maker is just one more system that eventually will fail. And every, every element of complexity that you put into a system is an added fail point. So we want to keep our vehicles as rugged as possible, and part of that process is keeping them as simple as possible, but no simpler. Yeah. You know, we don't want something that's just a platform bed. We want to have creature comforts that you want to have on the road, running water and heat and uh, solar power and being able to be completely independent. You don't have to have solar power if you don't need it. So all of our vehicles are built with the idea that you're independent. You can bust out and uh, just be free and be liberated, yeah. straight up. You know, everybody wants to be liberated. And so, you know, when we touched on to the rugged liberation, it, it resonated quickly with all of us. Yeah. It's like, this is actually what we want to represent ourselves to be. One of the things we've always had in our heart is the van bum, not just the guys that can afford a Mercedes that's all decked out. Yeah. 
And so whenever we put something in a van, our catchphrase is, is this gonna last to the fourth generation? Because somewhere in my psyche, I'm still a van bum. Somewhere in my psyche, somebody's gonna be buying a van that they're the fourth generation. And so, you know, they've, they've bought something 10, 15 years old. Uh, it's not decked out completely new, but everything works and everything is working perfectly. Everything is still rugged. Uh, and that van bun still gets a beautiful creation. Yeah. Something that is not gonna fall apart at all. We're not using, we're, we will never use press board. We'll never use these kind of construction materials that just don't last the test of time. So recently we've started a, a catalog product line. Is again for people who are a little more economically inclined, who are gonna be doing the fit out themselves, the DIY crowd. But we also wanna participate in what they're doing and help add some elegance and some ruggedness to what they're doing. So we have catalog order products that are built into the DIY. When we first got into this, I definitely thought we were gonna be working with younger people. Um, you know, the 35 to the 55 crowd, which seems to be the dominating part of the van conversion trends, the van life uh, trend. Yeah. But what we found is that there's plenty of people who are retired who are young at heart, and they've had this dream probably since they saw a van conversion back in the 60s and 70s, and That's you know the cool. same thing that so many people dreamed about back then. We learned our, our, ourselves that we're participating in some people's dreams who are retired now, and they've had this thing in their heart, this liberation yeah. in their heart for decades. And now that they're retired, they've finally been able to manifest it both financially and with their time. Uh, they come to us and we are, like this particular van here is a retired four service guy and his wife. And they just want to go out and enjoy America. Yeah. Uh, and they've been doing the four service obviously for their entire career. And now he's just retired and he wants to get out there and, and go. Yeah. And he's not looking for super complex systems. He wants something very rugged that's going to take him out to the back country and give him the peace of mind to be sort of gone. Uh, getting involved with people's dreams was a surprise. I, I shouldn't have been a surprise, but it was a surprise and uh, that's really fulfilling. Talk to me just a little bit, just very quickly here, in terms of like material choices, the decision to use this fabric or this furniture material, right? right. The first thing we think of is the fourth generation. Because if the fourth generation is getting a bomber product, that means the first, second, and third generation user of that vehicle also got an amazing product. Yeah. So any product that we get, uh, it has to maintain that level of ruggedness. If it's not gonna stick around to the fourth generation, we're just not interested in using it. So it is, there's a lot of product search that we have to go through in order to find uh, what we're looking for. And for example, I mentioned before press, press board. Yeah. It's the industry standard. Yeah. It's, uh, it's light and it's cheap, but it's, it's, it just doesn't hold up. It's just a, a, a poorly constructed piece of material and it doesn't hold up over time. Wood in, its, in, its, in itself it comes in so many different grades. Uh, what we're looking for is the grade that just doesn't break down as quickly over time. So everything, you know, the, the plywood is going to be the highest quality plywood that we can use. Our cabinets are, made, are not made out of wood, they're made out of aluminum frame and marine grade plastic kingboard, which just gives a totally new level of weight reduction and durability that we, can, that we build our cabinets around. So we're, you know, even throwing a, a piece of equipment into your van that would normally say hit a cabinet and just put a big gouge mm -hmm. in that cabinet through a, a veneer or a paint or something like that. Yeah. And the products that we use, you could put a big gouge in it and it is barely gonna show up because the, the, the product itself is so solid. I think the full-time van lifer, in all honesty, is just not in the price point yep. that we're offering. Yep. It's just, a, it's a reality. You yep. know, they're, they're the fourth generation. Is, and that's great. And I love the fact that they're out there living the dream because it allows everybody else to uh, generate a dream of their own. So the people that we're working with, each one of their dream is different. Sometimes it's because they want to spend more time with their family. They want to get their family out having fun. Then this is the tool that will get them to the trailhead or get them to the campground where the family can come, come together and bond better. That's one of the other dreams that's just fantastic to work with is the family. The family dream, you get a, a mother and a father coming in here talking about all the things that they want to do with their kids, envisioning how they can get the skis in there and the, 
bicycles in there and how they can get their other activities incorporated into a van and then yeah. get out there and do it. We went to the RV Expo in Louisville. Nothing that they were doing was what we're trying to do. And it's, it's, it's cool to be in almost completely separate markets because you know you do have something like that. You're like, okay, here's a bed here and here's a bed here and here's yeah. a bed here and here's an enclosed room. Here's another enclosed room. While with a van conversion, everything has to be multifunction. You can't, you just don't have the space to have single purpose yeah. tools. Yeah. So, you know, for sleeping, if you have a big long counter, there's no reason why that can't be a bunk bed. It's a flat space, you put an air mattress on there, yeah. and you have a, a huge bed that nobody else is thinking of it a bed because they're thinking of it as a counter. But a counter and a bed, they, they, they fulfill the same function. They're an elevated flat surface of a certain size. Okay. And I also believe that one of the functions that we have is uh, adding that level of finish to a DIY product that many people who are journeymen, construction people, just can't get to. They don't have 10, 15 years of wood, woodworking experience to make a finished vehicle look finished. So, you know, our overhead shelves, our cabinets, all come with what we call a signature wood. So every one of our vans has some sort of style of wood that is the signature finishing piece of that van. It comes out in trim, comes out in countertops, and you know we do mahogany or oak or maple or cherry, yeah, yeah, we're fine on and it's it's beautiful. Wood gives a softness to a conversion that is just not possible with um, metals and plastics and other kind of mm -hmm. or veneers. Mm -hmm. You can tell from a veneer as soon as you look at it. That's not wood. That's a veneer. Yeah. So with the DIY products, you get a, a countertop or a, a galley with a finished mahogany countertop your friends walk into that van, you come home from a hike in that van, and you look at that, I don't care if it's conscious or unconscious, every time you see a mahogany countertop, it's gonna make you feel good. Every time you see a cherry trim piece over the cab, conscious or unconscious, that's just gonna make you feel good. The oil countertops are great because it's a food grade, so you can chop and cut and abuse that wood a lot. Mm -hmm. Wood can take a huge amount of abuse as opposed to like a veneer or something like that where as soon as you go through that veneer you crack the surface and then you can see what it's underneath. Yeah. You know, you, you cut into an, a butcher block oak countertop and yeah. you put a scar into it because of a knife and you put another scar and another scar and another scar and then that spot just becomes this butcher block cutting board that has its own patina, its own yeah. life. The more you use it, the more life it has. Yeah. And you know, if you ever do want to resell and you don't want to have all those scars and marks, that countertop comes off, it just gets re-sanded and put back on and it's brand new. What we're trying to accomplish here is not how much stuff can I get in the van. That's not, what, that's not our ethos, that's not what yeah. we're trying to accomplish. So if somebody were to say, you know, I always want, I want everything in this van that you can possibly fit into a van, you're probably talking to the wrong people. Um, we can do a very, very beautiful, elegant fit out that is gonna be incredibly comfortable and will get you to the trailhead and be incredibly rugged but it's not going to have every single electronic device that is known to man today okay. that goes into a vehicle. You know, we're not trying to concentrate on the 27 inch flat screen TV. That's just not what we're trying to go to. And when we went to the expo, the feedback that we were getting from people is, I'm not looking for that. Mm -hmm. And you're not trying to shove it down my throat. Yeah. I'm not looking for trying to m move my entire house into a van. I'm trying to escape from that existence and go somewhere where minimalism has a, has a place. BeartoothVanWorks.com, uh, right on our landing page, there's a survey that you can take. How many people are gonna be in the van? How long are the trips you're gonna be taking? Uh, what is your dreams? What are your activities? And you fill that out and it comes to us. And so when we have that follow-up phone call, that gives us a little bit of a feeling about what you're trying to accomplish. 